Good morning. How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to uh, Friday. Finally made it here to the weekend. Hope everyone's having a good day. About 1044 a.m. That's California time here. April 4th, 2025 is the date. Latest activity on the earthquake 3D globe shows a 1.5 across California. A little bit of movement uh, happening here this morning just outside the Bay region with a 3.1. That uh, striking about 8 o'clock this morning just around the Concord area. Looks like that's off the Vaca Fault Zone. Further up north, um, this is obviously the Clear Lake Volcanic Field, which is hydrothermal-induced earthquakes. Uh, but I believe, let me see here, I think this area had a little bit larger earthquake last night. Yeah, just right after I went to bed, a four-pointer came into the geysers area. Um, there's actually no geysers out here. This is all geothermal fields uh, that are tapping into the heated areas below to produce and uh, create energy out there. There's a number of these geothermal plants and, you know, poking holes down there obviously creates some earthquake activity as well. Very close uh, within the proximity of all these geothermal uh, plants out there. But occasionally we do get some four pointers and even higher than that, upper fours. Although most of the activity that we see here across the geothermal fields are very small, unnoticeable earthquakes. Uh, last 30 days of earthquake activity out here, 1,725 earthquakes. And that is just what happens there uh, with the um, geothermal explorations there. Creating some energy, but also at the same time creating some energy. Uh, earthquake activity uh, further up in Northern California one more earthquake it looks like that was uh, well yesterday so not a whole lot of newer movement there to report uh, for the area now uh, at least this morning so far uh, last night a little bit of activity stirring up here across the Ridge Mark area looks like uh, most of these here from yesterday nothing new to report here today um, I know last night Right around the update time there, uh, seen a, a little movement out here along the west coast. Things were stirring up all across the plate boundary, but it looks as though right now things have uh, pretty much calmed down. Not seeing any major swarming out here. No unusual activity to note there across the uh, southern California area. Latest quake, there's a 1.1 near Big Bear City. That's just on the North American side of the plate boundary. Here's the San Andreas Fault which is currently sleeping, but uh, it won't be sleeping for long. I mean, it's been sleeping in a long, very long slumber, but uh, eventually that's gonna wake up. Uh, yesterday there, number of earthquakes around Mount Hood. I'm not seeing anything showing up here on the USGS map, but I do wanna double check uh, the PNSN network and see what they have here for the volcano seismograph stations around Mount Hood. There's that little swarm going on there on the southern flank here of Mount Hood Volcano in Oregon. Beautiful volcano. We'll take a look here and see if there's any recorded earthquakes coming in. Uh, pretty quiet. There's the activity from last night. I think the highest one we've seen was a 1.9. A couple other smaller quakes in there as well. Uh, looks like that only lasted for a short duration. And then things were just, uh, looks like they're quiet up there in terms of earthquake activity. This... Uh, hard to say exactly what that is. That almost looks like some type of uh, harmonic trimmer, but it's hard to say. Uh, I don't know what the weather is like up there right now. Let's give a quick glance, see what we have for the, uh, the wind up there. Cause a lot of times wind can show up, but I don't, I don't really see a whole lot of wind gusts up there right now. Maybe up around 30 miles per hour or so, but uh, just kind of watch that and see if this kicks up or if we see an increase in earthquake activity. It just it, To me, it looks like some type of magma movement, but hard to say at this point. It could be wind, but we'll double check back on that. Washington, pretty quiet. Um, Yellowstone, some activity outside the park there near the west of the Hebgen Lake Estates. We'll uh, double check that and make sure. <clears throat> Yellowstone, where'd you go? Still on the map, but there we go. Uh, let's see, a couple smaller earthquakes there overnight around the Madison River area. Very small microquakes, maybe a little bit more 
uh, this morning. But for the most part, things are uh, uh, remain quiet there across that uh, super volcano. And the oil fields, Texas still getting hit. Really nothing changing out there. It's just a daily sequence of events. Uh, nothing, nothing big. New Madrid seismic zone 2.7 this morning. That uh, is, of course, obviously a major hazard there across the good portion of the uh, uh, Memphis area. Quite a few states here that would be affected if this thing were to produce a big earthquake. Uh, 1811, 1812 had a series of upper seven magnitude earthquakes out here. But uh, these little earthquakes just give us a little friendly reminder that the fault system out there is still very much alive. As uh, far as noticeable uptick here across the uh, rest of the world, pretty good uptick in terms of uh, movement across the Tonga Trench. Pull up the uh, oceanic crust here so you can see. They're missing the layouts here. Normally when you switch over to the oceanic crust view, it will still show you the name of this trench, the Kermadec Trench, but it's missing. So hopefully they get that uh, back up and running. That's a nice little addition to the uh, to some of these options here on the map. Uh, but for now, Tonga Trench up here, bunch of fives. Well, let's see, we got one, two, fives, and a bunch of fours in here. The last one, a 4.1, pretty deep. 318 miles deep into that subduction zone. A shallow earthquake in between all this mix here. That uh, is a sign there that this area upstream here along the subduction zone interface is straining. Of course, the deeper activity here will add strain further upstream here. We could see some earthquake activity soon uh, in terms of larger scale movement. Very capable of producing some eight pointers along this area. Uh, New Zealand had a swarm of activity here yesterday. It looks like things have calmed down a little bit today. Um, a couple more threes underneath the area of North Island lacking, <coughs> excuse me, lacking earthquake activity around the Papua New Guinea area eastward along this plate boundary that should fill in, uh, Japan region, not seeing a whole lot of activity right now. Taiwan, a couple fours southward into the crunch zone. I call that the crunch zone because that's pretty much where all the plates tend to point in terms of meeting and colliding and subducting and doing all that stuff that plate tectonics do. Notice the arrows all pointing towards the uh, crunch zone. I don't think that's the official name, but I do like to call it that because it's always seen earthquake activity, including a 3.2 right now in the mix. Some further aftershock activity around the Myanmar region, also around the Himalayas. Those are the regions that had uh, some large earthquake activity this year. So a little bit of sequence of uh, aftershocks there. Uh, for the Iceland area, still got a bunch of earthquake activity happening up here. In fact, they believe that uh, we're going back up in terms of inflation across the area of the Savart Singhi region. Here's the last six hours, 88 earthquakes. Most of the movement up north here, north of Grindavik and south of Grindavik. Uh, the latest news here from the Icelandic Meteorological Office shows that uh, the measurements around the area indicate that uplift may have resumed. And I don't doubt it. After seeing all the earthquake activity here recently across the Iceland region and all across the Atlantic Rift Zone, I'll show you guys the last seven days here, you know, a bunch of movement down here, bunch around Iceland, north of Iceland, mid-Atlantic Ridge, seen a whole bunch in the sixth range. You know, when, when you separate the plates like that, obviously we're going to get upwelling of heated material from below. So it's no surprise there to see uh, this statement from the Icelandic Met Office there. Uh, deformation measurements still show movement at GPS stations around the northern part of the magma intrusion or the dike there on the northern part of the crater series row there where the last uh, little eruptive fissure kicked up. Uh, still a little uncertainty, right? The magma has you know somewhat moved north and away from the area. Uh, but I think this is an overall pattern here of seeing maybe something a little bit bigger in terms of a broader scale eruptive type event. So we'll watch that. Uh, uncertainty remains about the coming days and magma movements within the dike cannot yet be ruled out. Uh, there is the GPS measurements here. Uh, notice that when the magma was on the move, we had that small little eruptive fissure just outside of Grindavik and also north around the craters area north of Slingerfell, that uh, dropped in terms of inflation. But the magma did not 
you know, obviously it did not come out. There wasn't a long period of eruption to deplete the magma. It just moved away from the area. But now we're starting to go back up. And sometimes the magma does go in certain directions that may find a path further north. And then we'll get some further upswelling of magma from below. And it, it's hard to say exactly what's going to take place right now. But we are seeing that sharp uptick here of inflation. So things could get interesting here in the next coming, uh, in the couple coming days here, I would suppose, uh, if this continues that path of uh, inflation there. So we'll continue to watch that around Iceland. Been pretty active out there. The Atlantic Ocean in general has been way more active than the, what I've seen in quite a while. Remember, we had all these sixes right here. A bunch of swarming over the last couple of days south of Iceland and then this big event there around Iceland. Crazy. A lot of just a lot of movement out here that's uh way above normal for the uh, Atlantic Ocean earth boundary out there. All right, uh let's see anything else happening around the globe. Not seeing anything major popping up. I'll go ahead and give a quick glance here at the space weather activity where things have dropped off a little bit. I lowered my threat for the X-Flare. Probably, uh, yeah, I would say maybe we got a 5% chance. Uh, even the M-Flare activity is lower. These guys still have their set high, but looking at the magnetogram image here of 3048, that's this massive sunspot, which is now center disk. It's got a pretty well-defined, clear-cut separation of the magnetic structure there and that is normally not a good sign if you want this thing uh, to produce any type of flaring it may still produce a sea flare or two but uh, really not seeing a whole lot of uh, major complexity within that sunspot normally they'll separate like separate like that and just die out and behind that there's not a whole lot of um, further activity there that uh, we're looking at in terms of any stronger flaring not a whole lot here on the eastern limb as well let's go ahead and check out the far side watch see if there's anything uh kicking up there on the far side this is put out a couple days ago most recent image is going to be obviously not right here not for sure what's going on here looks like it's been offline here for a couple days because today is not the 31st. <laughs> so we'll have to check back on that. But if you think about it, we're four days from this date. This sunspot, pretty massive one, is probably much further over here now. Which means we should get a view of it here in the coming days as it stretches across the eastern limb here. Approaches the eastern limb. Storm Prediction Center for severe weather. High risk, or moderate risk, excuse me. Been dealing with a lot of high risk out here lately with some you know major tornado activity moderate though is uh still way up there got tornado threat there across the area of arkansas once again arkansas is just getting slammed uh tyler texas included longview north little rock jo jonesboro arkansas heads up today got uh, some spinning water vapor once again to deal with these tornadoes have been quite damaging there's a huge hatched area as well and that, that's a region that can see up to an ef5 tornado uh, within about 25 miles of a point. 10% or greater, looks like 15% in this uh, category. Got some wind and some big-time hail threats as well across Texas and into the same region that's got to deal with some tornado activity today. So just be on guard, stay weather aware. There's that system across the center portion of the country, southern plains, I should say, into Texas. We'll put that in motion there. It's just a rinse and repeat cycle there, precipitation and severe weather aspects there across that area. And uh, California looks like we got a little bit more rain coming in as we head towards early next week. And um, maybe another system at that. Looks like it's going to be an active uh, April. Of course, things are, you know, the patterns are starting to flip, starting to change. The jet, jet stream moves around. You still have that potential for some severe weather as the jet stream goes up north, way north of California and dips back down into the southern plains, interacts with the warmer, moist environment, and then you get that severe weather threat here across this area of the country. That's very typical for springtime. So uh, a rinse and repeat right now. Looks like it's just aimed right around the Arkansas area. All right, folks, I'm out of here. Uh, live seismograph stations there show not a whole lot. Pretty quiet conditions prevailing. 
We'll kind of keep an eye on things today here, see how the Friday goes. We'll catch you guys out here a little bit later on this evening for the Friday night update. Stay safe, folks.